Hello everyone, and welcome back to DMG. Are you looking to upgrade your GPU, but your low profile case can't fit one? Is your system too old to use Thunderbolt for an eGPU? Then this is just the video for you. Let's first just say that this configuration is absolutely ludicrous. No one in their right mind would hook up a GPU like this. However, do I look like a gal who knows what common sense is? Of course not. So in today's video, I've run SATA power and a USB cable that carries PCIe signals outside of my computer to an external GPU. Now, you may be noticing that I have a hard drive out here. Well, that's because the power supply only has one lead with all the SATA connectors on it. The one for the hard drive and the one that I'll have to be using here. So, to get it as far away from the case as possible for comedic effect, I had to bring the hard drive out too. It's also helping prop up the GPU so it doesn't touch the carpet because uh, we all know static bad. Now this, I want to establish quickly, don't try this. This is a 15 watt GPU. This SATA cable is carrying just 15 watts, which is still a little much for a power supply this old. I am kind of scared for my life. This does not carry power. This USB cable does not carry any power. It's just the PCIe signals. This GPU natively runs at 1x, but that's 3.0 1x. This computer only has PCIe 1.1 because I wanted an old computer to look cooler in the intro. So I just want to establish uh, if it works at all and the GPU seems slower than usual, that's why. Because I have tested this card in the past and there's a video on it on the channel. It's called the Fire Pro 2270X1. Now technically this would fit right into the system very well. In the video where I unboxed this card, I think two or three years ago, I, the, I actually put it in this system to test it and run it, and um, that's this card's origin story. So this time it returns to the system but is outside now. You see, being the smart person I am, I didn't get a power cord that's long enough. So um, I'm going to have to drag our whole setup here. All right, here we go. I've got the power lead. I'm going to run it under these cables so I don't put tension on them. I heard the speaker inside the computer pop, so that means it's got power. Turn on the monitor. We've got a green light on the riser. I heard the hard drive spin up. <laughs> it posted! We're getting a video out! And also, I did not know that this system would work with such a large disk. I am honestly kind of surprised that it worked with such a large disk because this is a Pentium 4 system. Let me just remind you that. We're booting into Windows! We're actually booting into Windows! How does this work? Why is this working? Well, this is the login screen. This is Windows 10. This is working. And, uh, okay. This is really cool. <laughs> I honestly didn't expect it to work this well. No issues in the BIOS. It booted straight up and were to my dog on the login screen within just a few minutes. Also keep in mind that this is a 3.6 gigahertz, one core, two thread Pentium 4 running Windows 10. It's actually handling pretty well, but most of the slowdowns will be because of CPU. Again, I just wanted to use this CPU and computer to just increase the overall age of the setup. So here is our lovely 3.6 gigahertz CPU with 16K of L1 cache. While our drivers are installing, I just want to talk about how unsafe these risers are for a second. 
this SATA cable is providing the only power, and in our case, it's delivering only 15 watts to the graphics card, plus whatever the hard drive is drawing, so that's not too much. However, you can buy 16x GPU risers, and those, if you buy a cheap shady one, can be extremely dangerous. Like, good, reputable eGPU boxes from Alienware, Blackmagic, companies like that are completely safe. I'm not denouncing eGPUs as a whole, but if you do it this way with a high power card and start pulling 75 watts plus 6 and 8 pin power connectors that you have to bring out of your case through, you know, a, a SATA cable, that will start a fire. I guarantee you that that can cause power supply and property damage, so just don't do that. But it's relatively safe on a low wattage card like this one. Okay, I'm not kidding you here. I just installed the drivers and rebooted, and there is an actual scent of smoke coming from over here. So there's something, it's like melted plastic. So something is getting very hot that should not be getting that hot. So we're definitely pushing the setup to its limits. More proof that you really, really, really shouldn't do this. I can't believe it. We've got a driver installed. Again, I'm sorry that this monitor is flickery. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, and because it's over VGA, that part of the screen is cut off. Also, that CPU temperature sensor is not correct, so don't believe it. The CPU actually runs in the mid-70s, which is probably what it, it's at right now. Um, let's see. Is it going to tell us anything else? No. It's not going to tell us power draw. So we've just got 50 degrees, which is, I mean, pretty normal for that GPU. Yeah, uh, this GPU, it looks like it doesn't give us power draw statistics, so that's unfortunate. The smell of burning plastic is starting to become unsettling, so I'm actually going to turn it off before anything goes wrong. But that is it for our fishy eGPU. It actually worked, which was more than I was expecting. So I've got the riser plugged in here. Oh, ow, that is hot. Okay, um, I'm very glad that I unplugged it now because that is uh, probably not a temperature that that should be. Like the GPU heatsink is less of a hot temperature than that is. Same with the connector here, and the SATA cable is very warm, and it's malleable. It's kind of melted the rubber here. So uh, this was a very unsafe thing. Another reminder to not do this ever. Also, yes, there's a power cord plugged in here, but it's not into the wall, so I'm safe. We've got our SATA connector from the power supply and the actual cable from the board. Uh, but yeah, that's our weird setup. Going to try and un plug it without touching it. But that's it for this video. Um, I'm probably never going to use this riser again. Oh, this USB cable is so hot, and it's not just from touching the heatsink. Like, the whole thing is warm throughout. But anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Another reminder to not do this. Thanks for watching, though. Subscribe if you enjoyed, and see you next time.